Way out in the distant edges of our solar neighborhood, Pluto lurks like a quiet little troublemaker. This little one is a quiet, icy world. Troublemaker, an icy world once proudly listed among the official planets, it has taken center stage of renewed attention thanks to some eyebrowers and comments by space science icons, Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku, according to their recent concerns. Pluto might be creeping toward a dangerous encounter with Neptune. But, how could such a thing even happen? What are the real consequences if this frosty loner ends up colliding with crashing into its much larger celestial neighbor? Is this just another quirky twist in space's endless drama, or are we standing at the edge of something truly gay? Strap in as we dive headfirst into the weird, strange, and spellbinding possibility of Pluto's collision with Neptune. Pluto may have been downgraded to a dwarf planet, but it's never left the curiosity spotlight. Spotlight of modern scientists. Keep a close watch on it, and recent ideas from top minds suggest Pluto's orbital path creeps. Dangerously close to Neptune's. Tyson and Kaku aren't just tossing wild theories. They're legitimately worried that these two cosmic wanderers might one day clash in a significant way, and that may spell serious consequences, even for us here on Earth. But how on Earth, or rather, how in space, would space would that ever happen? Unlike the big planets that orbit the Sun in neat, circularish orbits, paths Pluto's route is wildly eccentric. In fact, it takes Pluto nearly 248 years to make one full loop around the Sun, since we discovered it back in 1930. Pluto hasn't even had time to finish one complete lap, but that's just the beginning of Pluto's oddities. It doesn't play by the same orbital rules. Rather than gliding along the level plane most planets share, Pluto's path tilts at a sharp 17 degrees. That makes it orbit like it's trying to cut across the rest of the planets at a weird angle, sort of as if a cosmic rebel were ignoring traffic lanes. What makes this even more fascinating and a little scary is that for about 20 years in every orbit, Pluto swings actually closer to the Sun than Neptune does. That's right, right, the little guy sneaks ahead of the big one. You might naturally ask, wait, why don't they smash into each other? Well, the answer is kind of magical in math, gravitational gymnastics. As soon as Pluto was discovered, that astronomers became interested in its strange motion. While the other planets glide near the sun's equator, the strange looping path and tilted orbit of Pluto made people scratch their heads. Eventually, they realized something mind-blowing. Pluto's orbit actually crosses Neptune's. That sounds like a recipe for disaster, right? Wrong because the cosmos has some mind-bending rules. One of those rules comes from something called the three-body problem. Imagine trying to predict how three space objects say objects say Pluto, Neptune, and the Sun pull Sun pull on each other and move as a result. It's like juggling three balls made of magnets in zero gravity. The chaos caused by these surprisingly organized chaos interactions is surprisingly organized. Scientists use weird and wonderful terms like non-concurrent libration, orbital precession, and VZK wobbling to explain what's happening. Dot. In the case of Pluto and Neptune, non-concurrent libration basically means this. When Pluto's path intersects Neptune's, they're never in the same place at the same time. They stay at least 90 degrees apart in their journey around the Sun. Kind of like roommates who never bump into each other because they use opposite schedules. Orbital precession adds another twist. This is Pluto's orbit's gradual wobble. As it loops through space, when Pluto gets near Neptune, it's usually way above or below Neptune's orbital plane like passing over someone's head on a trampoline. That height difference acts like a cosmic overpass safe, overpass safe and sound. Then there's the VZK Wobble, a delightful mouthful named after three researchers who studied how gravity dances between multiple space objects. This wobble helps explain why Pluto's path can be so bizarre but still follow it consistently for billions of years. Think of it as a strange groove in space that Pluto gets locked into. So, even though it looks like Pluto is bouncing around like a drunken satellite, it's actually tracing a very steady, predictable path. These gravitational checks and balances work together like the world's most complicated ballet. Keeping Pluto and Neptune from bumping into each other, the whole thing shows just how mind-bending celestial mechanics can be. Back in the 1980s, scientists ran computer simulations and discovered that, even with all these stabilizing features, Pluto's orbit is still technically unstable, kind of like someone walking a tightrope during an earthquake. Small tweaks to its starting position could result in wildly different future paths. And yet, over the long haul millions, haul millions, or even billions of years, Pluto years Pluto somehow manages to stay in line. What's even cooler is the fact that it's not just Neptune keeping Pluto in check. Giant planets like Jupiter and Saturn lend their gravitational muscle too. Jupiter's pull, in particular, acts like a space bouncer, making sure Pluto doesn't wander off into trouble. Saturn throws in a bit of support as well. All these forces combine, like cosmic referees. 
making sure Pluto keeps spinning without crashing into anything or flying off into deep space. Dot, the lack of this gravitational teamwork in our solar system could be total mayhem, collisions between planets, asteroids going rogue, moons breaking free ikes. Free ike. In Pluto's case, its oddball orbit could have spelled doom, if not for the invisible dance moves of gravity, keeping everything in harmony. The idea that Pluto and Neptune might one day collide makes it all the more crucial to keep studying these movements. Pluto's journey is a great example of how chaos can coexist with stability. It teaches us that the solar system isn't as tidy as we once thought. It's more like a giant, delicate machine, where every gear has to be in just the right spot, or else the whole thing could fall apart. Scientists call this orbital chaos, which is basically the idea that a tiny change in a planet's position or speed can lead to totally unpredictable outcomes down the road. To figure this stuff out, researchers run thousands of computer simulations, tweaking Pluto's position just slightly and watching what happens. And what they've seen is mind-blowing. One tiny change now can completely reshape Pluto's orbit. A few years later, still, even with all that seeming chaos, Pluto's orbit somehow stays steady over absurdly long time spans. It resembles a cosmic illusion. The path looks random. However, it is actually fairly consistent. Predicting this kind of motion, though, is extremely challenging. The further you try to predict, the more you can guess. The better you track. It's kind of like trying to predict the weather in 100 years. One minor oversight at the outset results in the whole prediction being useless. That's why astronomers always leave some wiggle space in their models. They are aware the universe loves surprises. But Pluto isn't just a symbol of chaos. It's also a sign of how far we've come in understanding space. Even though we've made massive leaps in astronomy, Pluto reminds us that there's still a ton we don't know. How Jupiter and Saturn interact with Neptune and Pluto demonstrates just how interlinked everything is. A tiny planet's fate could depend on a massive one's gravity. We are connected by millions of miles. Back to those modern concerns, why are Tyson and Kaku waving red flags about a potential crash now? Tyson, who famously helped get Pluto demoted to dwarf planet status, has always been a loud persona when it comes to clearing up our misunderstandings about space. He doesn't see Pluto's reclassification as an insult, but as a much-needed update to our cosmic dictionary. His excitement for science is contagious, and he sees Pluto's messy orbit as a clue that there's still plenty to figure out. Still, even he acknowledges that Pluto's path could spell trouble if things change enough. Tyson isn't making wild predictions. He's studying data for fun tracking changes, and acknowledging that, while unlikely, a Pluto-Neptune collision isn't completely out of the question. If something throws off Pluto's orbit, say, a passing comet or a gravitational nudge from another planet it could one day end up on a crash course. The big questions are, are Neptune and Pluto both safe? Would they survive the impact, or would we get a whole new ball of rock and ice where both planets used to be? While there's no firm proof that such a collision is coming, Tyson's cautious warnings remind us that planetary motion is no joke. The more we understand, the better we can prepare. This isn't just science fiction, it's a reminder that we're still in the early chapters of understanding our solar system's future, studying how planets, moons, and other objects all interact helps us plan for the long haul. Whether Pluto will stay on its winding path or veer off into something much more chaotic is still unknown, but its story keeps us hooked. It's the tale of a tiny world dancing between destruction and harmony which serves as a reminder that the weirdest objects in space can have an important role to play. When Pluto was first spotted, it was just another speck at the edge of everything. But now it's a symbol for the delights that space offers, how far science has come, and what it means for the mystery that still surrounds the universe. Even though people debated whether Pluto ought to be considered a planet, one thing's clear, it grabbed our curiosity. As telescopes get stronger and computers get faster, we'll keep uncovering more about Pluto, Neptune, and the mysterious mechanics that bind them. Every new piece of data brings us one step closer to comprehending the final destiny of our solar system. Whether a collision is coming or not, Pluto's strange swerving voyage offers us a front row seat to the wonder and the strangeness of the universe. And that's a journey worth watching. The adventure into space has barely begun, and Pluto, with all its quirks and irregularities, remains a key player in that story. Even though it's small, cold, and far from the center of our solar system, it represents something much bigger our endless curiosity and drive to explore the unknown. Whenever we investigate Pluto's orbit, its strange dance with Neptune, or its place in the Kuiper Belt, we're really asking deeper questions about the nature of space and time. Could other planets have orbits just as bizarre? Could some distant, celestial body beyond Pluto be pulling strings behind the scenes? These aren't just sci-fi musings. They're the kind of questions that lead to real discoveries. The idea of a potential Pluto-Neptune collision, while far-fetched and unlikely anytime soon, forces us to re-examine how fragile orbits can be. 
and how little we truly understand about the long-term behavior of the solar system. After all, Pluto's current trajectory is a result of gravitational forces in a billions of years tug of war, and even a slight nudge caused by an unseen object, a passing star, or some mysterious force could push things off balance. This is where modern-day space science shines. Using ever-advancing computer models, researchers can simulate how minor disturbances could affect Pluto's path centuries from now. These aren't just academic exercises. They help us prepare for all kinds of cosmic possibilities. Understanding orbital dynamics at this level could even help us track dangerous asteroids, plan interplanetary missions, or predict how Earth itself might shift over eons. It's all connected, and we can't forget the human element in this story. Scientists like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku aren't just warning us about Pluto and Neptune for dramatic effect. They're encouraging the public to take interest in the mechanics of the universe. They want people to understand that space isn't static. It's alive, constantly changing, full of patterns and surprises. That's what makes celestial mechanics so fascinating. It's a combination of strict physical laws and unpredictable behavior, a bit like a cosmic game of chess played over millions of years. Despite the fact that Pluto is no longer officially labeled a planet, its story continues to inspire. It reminds us that science is never finished. It's always being revised, updated, and challenged. Pluto's downgrade to a dwarf planet sparked debates around the globe. Not just about astronomy, but about how we define and categorize the world. Around us, that conversation alone brought space science into the mainstream in a manner unlike any other discoveries have. At the heart of it all is a simple but powerful idea that even space's smallest object can teach us something huge. Pluto, with its icy crust, thin atmosphere, and wildly tilted orbit, may appear to be an exception, but it's precisely because it's so different that it matters so much. The more we study these oddballs of the cosmos, the more we realize just how diverse and dynamic our solar system really is.